Hallelujah. I want to greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Uh, it's a, a great privilege, it's a great honor to stand before you again this afternoon. Uh, the 3.30 service. And uh, you are such a wonderful people whom the Lord loves. Praise God. I normally attend the 10 o'clock service in the morning, but I've been requested again to stand uh, in the place of your usual preacher this afternoon. But like I said, it is a great honor, it is a great privilege to stand in the house of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. I also want to introduce you my a very special person in my life. Uh, that's my helper, my wife. You know, we... I'm working here currently on an assignment in Kuwait, uh, and uh, she is in Dublin, in Ireland, with the rest of the family. We are blessed with three children, and uh, my wife is here this afternoon. She's very shy. You can just raise your hand for them to see you. Praise God. And our youngest son, he's called Emmanuel, is here with Mama. They've been here for the past uh, two weeks now. Praise God. She always comes, but it's all because we attend the other service, so you probably didn't, don't know her. But this is my wife, praise God. She's called Missy, praise God. The other two are back in Ireland. They are doing well. They greet you, praise God. Hallelujah. Anyway, let us go again into the word of God. I want us to open our Bibles to the book of Psalms. And I want to open Psalm 105. The last time... I preached from Psalm 105 from verse 1 to 5, but today I want to finish it off. Hallelujah. And I'm going to try and compress it within the time limit that is available. Praise the Lord. I will read the whole Psalm. I know last time we read from verse 1 to 5, but just to put it back in context again, let us just read the whole Psalm. Do you love the word of God? Hallelujah. I think it's David. The psalmist says, I rejoice at your word as one who has found great spoil. The word of God is so sweet. It is sweeter than the honeycomb. So as you listen to it this afternoon, be blessed. Hallelujah. I trust you have got your own Bible. If you don't have a Bible, you can look at the projection on the screen. I read from the King James Version. But look at your own Bible and make sure you are a friend to your Bible. Let God speak to you himself is you study the word of God every day. Hallelujah. Uh, Psalm 105, it says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his face evermore. Remember his marvelous works that he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O ye seed of Abraham, his servant, you children of Jacob, his chosen. He is the Lord our God, his judgments are in all the earth. He hath remembered his covenant forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant, saying, Unto thee will I give the land of Canaan the lot of your inheritance. When they were but a few men in number, yea, very few, and strangers in it, when they went from nation to, na to another, from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no men to do them wrong, yea, he reproved the kings for their sakes, saying, Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Moreover, he called for a famine upon the land. He break the whole staff of bread. He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron until the time that his word came. The word of the Lord tried him. The king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his substance to bind his princes at his pleasure and to teach his senators wisdom. Israel also came unto Egypt and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham and he increased his people greatly 
and made them stronger than their enemies and turned their heart to hate his people to deal subtly with his servants. He sent Moses, his servant, and Aaron, whom he had chosen. They showed his signs among them and wonders in the land of Ham. He sent darkness and made it dark, and they rebelled not against his word. He turned their waters into blood and slew their fish. Their land brought forth frogs in abundance in the chambers of their kings. He spake, and they came divers sorts of flies and lice in all their course. He gave them hail for rain and flaming fire in their land. He smote their vines also and their fig trees and broke the trees of their course. He spake and the locusts came and caterpillars and that without number. He did eat up all the herbs in their land and devoured the fruit of their ground. He smote also all the firstborn in their land, the chief of all their strength. He brought them forth also with, uh, sorry, let me read that again. He brought them forth also with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. Egypt was glad when they departed, for the fear of them fell upon them. He spread a cloud for a covering and fire to give light in the night. The people asked, and he brought quails and satisfied them with the bread of heaven. He opened the rock, and water gushed out. They ran in the dry places like a river. For he remembered his holy promise in Abraham his servant. And he brought forth his people with joy and his chosen with gladness. And he gave them the lands of the heathen and they inherited the labor of the people. That they might observe his statutes and keep his laws. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. May God bless us through the reading of his word. Hallelujah. Let us give another good clip offering for the word of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Before I speak what I want to say today, I want to start by recapping what I preached the other week when I was with you from Psalm, the same Psalm where I read from Psalm 105 uh, from verse 1 to verse number 5. And uh, I say this psalm is a descriptive praise psalm. Hallelujah. And the descriptive praise psalms, they praise God for his attributes and for his acts. And that's what we see in this psalm. The psalmist talking about the works of God, the acts of God, and what he had done. And it begins by saying, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Praise God. Call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. You see, God desires us and he expects us to always give thanks to him. Hallelujah. Praise God. To sing psalms to him. Paul also talks about it in the, to the Galatians. He talks about it to the uh, Ephesians. Praise God. That when you are filled with the spirit of God, you know, he says, do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Ghost, with the Holy Spirit. And when you do that, when you are filled, one thing that will come out automatically is you begin to sing psalms and hymns unto God. Hallelujah. So let it be a habit of your life to give thanks to the Lord, to sing psalms and hymns together corporately or even to yourself. Hallelujah. As you are driving, as you are taking a shower, as you are doing your household chores, as you are walking up and down the beach or the street, learn to sing psalms of praise unto the Lord. It also says the glory in his name. In other words, speak or talk about God with great enthusiasm and admiration. When you talk to your friends, when you talk to your brothers and sisters, when you talk to one another, let us talk with enthusiasm. Let us glory in his name. Praise God. You see, I also told you that giving thanks is an expression of gratitude, of appreciation, recognition, and acknowledgement of what the Lord has done. If the Lord has blessed you, give thanks to him. Instead of complaining and grumbling, give thanks unto the Lord. Paul writes to the Philippians in chapter 2, verse 14. He says, do all things without memorings or disputings. Learn to give thanks unto the Lord. The church of Jesus Christ is supposed to be filled with people who are so full of gratitude because of what the Lord has done. Imagine even our salvation, we did not deserve it. We did not earn it. 
It is not of ourselves. We are saved by grace through faith. Not of our works. We did nothing to deserve it. But God himself, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. He came and he died for us. And for that reason, you have every reason to give thanks unto the Lord. Hallelujah. I also told you that Paul is a great example. Because throughout his epistles, he gives thanks to the Lord. Hallelujah. For the people of God, he gives thanks in all circumstances. Are we still together? In the book of Corinthians, he says, I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Christ Jesus. I remember I told you the church at Corinth was a difficult church. Hallelujah. You know, they didn't even like Paul that much. They, were, they had factions in that church. Some said, I belong to Apollos. Some said, I belong to Peter. They didn't love Paul that much, maybe because he was not eloquent. Maybe he was not handsome or he uh, did not have much. But you know what? He is the apostle that God has given, it, it, it given to them just like Apostle Paul, Peter. But they didn't like Paul that much. But Paul did not use that as an excuse. Nevertheless, he looked at them and he thanked God for them. He saw what God was doing in their lives. He saw that God was changing them one person at a time. Let us learn to be grateful. Let us learn to thank God, just like Paul teaches us by example. When you look at the house of God, when you look at the church, when you look at one another, please let us give thanks unto the Lord. Are we together, people of God? Instead of complaining, let us thank God for our pastors. Instead of complaining, let us thank God for the leaders God has given us. Instead of complaining, let us thank God for the elders God has given us. Instead of complaining, let us thank God for those that stand and lead us in worship. Are we together? And likewise, those who stand before the people, instead of complaining about them, let us thank God for the congregation, for the people that God has given. Hallelujah. Paul was a great example. Praise God. He would give thanks in Romans. He said, first I thank God through Jesus Christ for you all. To the Ephesians. He says, wherefore, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, your love unto all the saints, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Hallelujah. He also says, give thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. To the Philippians, he said, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Are we still together? To the Colossians, he says, we give thanks to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. And to the Thessalonians, he says, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning you. Hallelujah. So the psalmist here, he says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Paul is a great example. We must always give thanks unto the Lord. Hallelujah. He then says also, seek his strength. Seek the Lord, his strength. Seek his face forevermore. Remember his marvelous works that he has done. Hallelujah. You see, when you remember the marvelous works that the Lord has done, you know, the work of faith, it builds its hope for the future on God's proven faithfulness in the past. That's why it's important to always remember what the Lord has done. Praise God. Yes, you may even need to diarize it Put it in your diary. When there's a milestone, when God has done something great in your life, he has delivered you from the mouth of the lion. When you were supposed to be fired at work and God does a miracle, write it in your diary. Are we together, people of God? And let us remember his works, his judgments, his wonders, his marvelous works. Because when we always remember, praise God, it will build faith for the future. You know, Satan wants you to forget. He wants you to forget what God has done. He wants you to forget the breakthroughs that he gave you. Praise God. If God delivers you from an accident, write it down and always remember when you travel that God remembered me and he delivered me from that accident, from death, and I'm alive today. I give him thanks because I know that he's always protecting me. Are we together, people of God? So let us always remember his marvelous judgments. This is what the psalmist here has done actually if you read through it. That's why I said let us read through it all. 
praise God. We shall go uh, in the verse by verse, but you will see that he is clearly remembering what God had done. Are we together? When encountering challenges, recall the faithfulness of the Lord. First Corinthians tells us, God is faithful by whom you have called unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Remember his faithfulness. Praise God. First Thessalonians 5, he talks about his faithfulness. Second Thessalonians 3 verse 3, it also talks about his faithfulness. Let us remember and recall those attributes of God and let us give thanks unto him. Are we still together, people of God? Hallelujah. Now, I will take it from verse 6. That was just the background of what I preached the other week. From verse 6 now, he says, O ye seed of Abraham, his servant, you children of Jacob, his chosen. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, I want you to know, and I want you to understand it, and I want you to get it into you, that we are the seed of Abraham. We are his family. We are his descendants. Not in the flesh, but by faith. You know, in Ephesians, in chapter 1, Paul explores the story of the gospel, of how all history comes into a climax in Jesus Christ, in his creation of this multi-ethnic community of his followers, as the Christians. This huge family, the family of God, of restored human beings, unified in Jesus Christ, the Messiah. In Ephesians, from chapter 1 to, uh, to chapter number 3, praise God. From eternity past, Paul, as he explores, he shows us how God had purposed to choose and to bless a covenant people. Hallelujah. You will see that from Genesis, some, from uh, chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. We will look at it later. This family of Abraham. Now, through Jesus Christ, anyone can be adopted into that family. Are we together? Praise God. You see, in the uh, Paul's epistle to the Galatians, he says in verse chapter 3, he says in verse 7, Know you, therefore, that which they that which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. Hallelujah. We are of faith and we are the children of Abraham. Hallelujah. You know, as yet when Abraham was given the promises, you know, he was still in the flesh and it was applying only to the Jews. Those that came out of his loins in the flesh. Hallelujah. But God had already purposed that he wanted to build this model family, this model nation, which would be a blessing to all the nations of the earth. Hallelujah. And because we were not of the, in the flesh the children of Abraham, we were the Gentiles. We were excluded. We were not part of that agreement or of that covenant. So we did not qualify. We could not even enter. There was, was a barrier around. You could not become a Jew unless under very strict conditions. Praise God. Hallelujah. But in Jesus Christ, he removed that barrier so that everyone, by faith in Jesus Christ, the Messiah, we qualify, we become part of that family of Abraham. That's why in verse 9 of Galatians, Paul also says, Galatians 3, so then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. And the promises of Abraham, they are ours also. Hallelujah. Don't forget, I said in verse 6 of Psalm 105, he says, O ye seed of Abraham, his servant. And what I'm trying to explain here is, we are the seed of Abraham. Hallelujah. Ephesians, Paul also talks about it in chapter 2. And he mentions there, he says, wherefore remember that you being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called and circumcision, by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh by the hands, that at the, that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope, 
and without God in the world. That was our situation. We did not have any part in the family of Abraham. We did not have any part in that nation. We were aliens. But now in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. For he is our peace. And he has made both one and he has broken the middle wall of partition between us. Because we were not naturally of the children of Abraham, there was a partition. We could not partake of the promises of Abraham. Hallelujah. Praise God. But through Christ, we, in other words, both Jews and Gentiles, have access by one spirit unto the Father. Then he says in verse 19, Now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of their household of God. Amen. Hallelujah. We are fellow citizens of the saints. We belong to the household of God. Hallelujah. So that scripture there, which say where the psalmist says, O oh, ye seed of Abraham, ye servant, don't feel excluded because we are the seed of Abraham. Praise God. Hallelujah. I know from verse 8 to verse 11 of Psalm 105, he says, in from verse uh, uh, 8, he has remembered his covenant forever. And the word which he commanded to a thousand generations, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac, and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. Saying unto thee will I give the land of Canaan the lot of your inheritance. Remember when we give thanks, we are acknowledging God for what he has done. And in my introduction I also said, it says glory in him. Rave ye in him. Hallelujah. In other words, boast yourself in him with enthusiasm. Here the psalmist is reminding us about how God remembered his covenant because he is a covenant keeper. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. He made a covenant with Abraham. And remember this covenant, it was himself who chose unconditionally. He called Abraham. You can read that in the book of, uh, uh, of Genesis, I think from in chapter 11. Abraham did not do anything to deserve anything. That's why even our, even our salvation, we did not do anything. Abraham was simply called by God. And God said to him, I'm going to make a nation through you. He did it unconditionally. Abraham had not asked for it. God simply decided to make this modern nation of a people who are transformed, who are his own. His family, the family of God. So he comes to him and he gives him a promise. And in that promise, God provides a blessing in three areas. He says, you know what? Number one, I'm going to bless. I'm going to make your name great. And I'm going to bless you. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Now God kept that promise. Let us look at Genesis chapter 12. Let us just look at the promise which God made. Genesis chapter 12. Are we still together, people of God? Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 12. Can you just open it? In verse 1 to 3, it says, Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show you, and I'll make of thee a great nation, and I'll bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. So God himself made a promise to Abraham. Later on, you will see that God continued to expound on that promise. Here it was just in outline. But if you read your Bible, if you go on to Genesis chapter 13, you go to Genesis chapter 15, to chapter 17, you'll see God give him more and more details. But here he just tells him in brief outline. 
that you know what, Abraham, I'm going to bless you. Praise God. I'm, the, all the nations of the earth are going to be blessed through you. Are we together? He was speaking a personal blessing, a national blessing, and a universal blessing. To Isaac, after Abra Abraham had gone, because God is a covenant keeper, he will not forget. He comes back to Isaac in Genesis chapter 26, and again, he repeats the same promise. From verse 2 to 5, And the Lord appeared unto him, that is Isaac, and said, Go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. So journey in this land, and I will be with thee, and will bless you. For unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham your father. Praise God. God is repeating the same promise to Isaac, the same promise that he had spoken to Abraham. Then Isaac's son, Jacob, is given the same promise as well. In uh, Genesis chapter 28, from verse 13, he is told, And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father and the God of Isaac. The land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee, and I will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and I will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave you until I have done that which I have spoken thee of, to thee of. Praise God. Again, you see here, God, the covenant keeper, the promise keeper, repeating the promise to Jacob. Are we together, people of God? Hallelujah. Now, these promises, you will find that in the book of Joshua, because God had promised them a land, right? And he said to Abraham, I will give it to you. He told Isaac, I will also give it to you. He told Jacob, I will also give it to you. And you will find God was faithful. Even though they were into captivity in Egypt for almost 400 years, God came and he took them out of Egypt. And he brought them to that land which he had promised to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And you find Joshua in chapter 21 saying in verse 43 and the lord gave unto israel all the land which he swore to give unto their fathers and they possessed it and it dwelt therein and the lord gave them rest round about according to all that he swore unto their fathers and there stood not a man of all their enemies before them the lord delivered all their enemies into their hand they failed not out of any good thing which the Lord had spoken unto the house of Israel. All came to pass. Hallelujah. That's why I say God is a covenant promise keeper. He promised many hundreds of years before. But I want to say to us, I want to challenge you. Because some of us, because of the challenges that we face in life, we end up getting discouraged. But I want you not to be discouraged. Because God is a covenant keeper. He is a promise keeper. Everything that he promised, it came to pass. Are we still together? Hallelujah. In verse 14, he said, He suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved the kings for their sakes. Saying, touch not my anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Hallelujah. You see, because God had chosen Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, he chose Israel. And because of who he is and because of his nature and his attributes, he will never cast away his people. Hallelujah. You see, God will not forsake his inheritance. We are his people. Just like he did not forsake Isaac, he did not forsake Abraham, he did not forsake Jacob, he will not forsake you. And I want to encourage you this afternoon, no matter what challenges you are facing in your life, that God is faithful. And as much as he did not allow any harm to come upon Abraham, he reproved the kings. He will not allow, he will not suffer you to be tempted or to be tried beyond that which you are able. Are we together? Praise God. Because you find that in Genesis, just to show that God is faithful. Praise God. 
When, I, when Abraham went to Egypt, when there was famine in the land, Sarah was so beautiful, and you know, he discussed with his wife, and he said, you know what, I know that if I tell them that you are my wife, they will kill me, so I will just say you are my sister. So, that's what they decided to do. But when they got to Egypt, the king of Egypt, Pharaoh, saw this Sarah who was so beautiful, and he took Sarah into his house, intending to make her his wife. But the Bible says, in chapter 12 of Genesis, go, the Lord God plagued Pharaoh in his house with the great plagues because of Sarai, Abraham's wife. Hallelujah. That's why here where we read, he suffered no man to do them any wrong. And he reproved the kings. Likewise, when Isaac went also to, uh, was faced with, the, with Abimelech, wanting to take his wife, praise God, Abimelech, after he found out, he charged all his people saying, he that touches this man, Isaac, or his wife, shall be put to death. Are we together? God is faithful. He did not allow any harm to come upon his people. Praise God. You see, I love it because the word of God is so full of promises which we can claim in our lives. Because in Isaiah chapter 54, to those servants of God who want to serve God and are serving God with all their hearts. To every child of God who is serving God with all their hearts. He says, Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Hallelujah. If you are serving God with all your heart, surely opposition will come. Are we together? You'll find opposition at work. You'll find opposition in the family. You'll find opposition around you. Please let me never, uh, don't allow anybody to lie to you. Because some people will tell you that, you know what, come to Jesus and everything will be fine. In the sense that you will feel no opposition, everything will be okay. But let me tell you, when you give your life to Jesus, that is the beginning of troubles if you want. But God makes a promise. He says, surely they will gather together against you, but not by me. Then he makes a promise. In Isaiah 54 verse, 17, 54 verse 17, he says, No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment, thou shalt condemn. Hallelujah. These are the promises of God. Just like God promised Abraham, Isaac, Jacob to Israel, they apply to you. God is faithful. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, from verse 16 to verse 45, the psalmist gives a chronicle of how God is in full control of the events. Praise God. And by divine arrangement, we see the, the story that Joseph was sold into Egypt for a servant. Hallelujah. Praise God. But at the appointed time, God lifted him up to become the ruler of Egypt. Praise God. Because it says from verse 16 there, moreover he called a famine upon the land, he broke the whole staff of bread, he sent a man before them, even Joseph who was sold for a servant. And there, if you read that story of Joseph, he was accused falsely. He ended up in prison. But that was not the end. Satan does not have the final say. At the final appointed time, Joseph was taken out of that prison from a prisoner to become the prime minister of Egypt. Hallelujah. You see, when your time has come, nobody can stop it. When the Lord's appointed time has come in your life, hallelujah, there are not enough demons in hell there are not enough spirits there. The devil himself, he can't do anything. When Joseph's time came, Pharaoh himself sent for him. He took him out. Hallelujah. And all of a sudden, he was ruling over Egypt. Hallelujah. Praise God. And Israel also came. That is uh, um, Israel, that's Jacob. He came into Egypt, verse 23. And Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. 
Hallelujah. You know, when they came, they were just a few in number. You know, there were only 70 souls in uh, Genesis, sorry, in Exodus actually. In Exodus chapter number one, he talks about it there. It says in verse five of chapter one, and all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were 70 souls for Joseph was in Egypt already. So there were very few of them. There were only 70 souls. They went into Egypt. But you know what? In verse 24 of Psalms, God increased them. And he made them greater and stronger than their enemies. And eventually he brought them forth with silver and with gold. Hallelujah. No, they came as 70 people. When they were in the land, they arose a king who did not know Joseph. They started to persecute the, the, the Israelites. He started to persecute the children of God. Verse 8 of Exodus chapter 1, I'll just read it for you. It says in verse 8, Now they arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply and they come to pass. And it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Perthom and Rames. Verse 12 says, but the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. Hallelujah. Say thank you, Jesus. Praise God. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. This is God fulfilling his promises. Hallelujah. Praise God. The more they afflicted them, the more they increased, the more they multiplied. You know, sometimes we get angry, we get discouraged when we face challenges. But let me tell you, God is doing something. He will turn around that situation. That's why you must learn to give thanks always in all situations. Here the children of Israel thought we are being made to work hard. Oh, this is difficult. But the more they were afflicted, the more they were increasing. The more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied. Are we together? Praise God. Celebrate it. When uh, you are faced with the diverse situations of temptations and trials, thank God and say, God, this is my opportunity to be strengthened. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, the people who do bodybuilding, you know what they do? They exert their bodies. They carry weights to build muscle. The heavier the weights, the bigger the muscles. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, if you want those muscles to be built, you exercise them. Likewise, if you want to be built up in the Lord, celebrate it when you are faced with diverse situations of temptations. Hallelujah. Thank God and say, Lord, this is an opportunity for me to grow. This is an opportunity for me to find you. Because it says, seek and you shall find. Ask and it shall be given. Knock and the door shall be opened. It is the time to go down on your knees and cry to God and say, Lord, show yourself to me. Reveal yourself. Some are trusting in horses and in chariots, but I will remember the name of the Lord. I will call upon your name. Hallelujah. I do not war. I do not fight with flesh and blood. We are not going to take guns or physical weapons, but my weapons are, uh, are spiritual. I'll go on my knees and I will cry to God. And the Lord will hear me. Are we together, people of God? So these children of Israel, the more they were afflicted, the more they were increasing and strengthening. Hallelujah. Say thank you, Jesus. So celebrate it when you find situations like that. No, eventually, when they left, they became so strong, and they were so mighty. And when the time of their going out came, they went out with the silver and the gold. The Bible says there was not any one feeble person among their tribes. 
Hallelujah. You know, in Exodus, Moses instructed them when they were about to go to borrow from the Egyptians, to borrow jewels of silver, jewels of gold and raiment. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they lent them such things as they required. The Bible says, and they spoiled the Egyptians. They plundered the Egyptians. Slaves going out laden with gold and silver with abundance. Hallelujah. What are we talking about? We are talking about the faithfulness of God. Hallelujah. This is what the psalmist is celebrating here. You know, he talks about the signs that God did in, when they were in Egypt. How he turned the waters into blood. Flies, lies, their trees were drying up and breaking up. Their sons getting killed. These were the wonders of God. And this is what the psalmist is saying. That's why he simply says, let us give thanks unto the Lord. Remember I said, learn to write down. Learn to diarize the great victories that God has done to us. And in all things, thank the Lord. So he's just encouraging us here to say, let us give thanks to the Lord. For his past faithfulness, are we together? He has been faithful, you know. He's talking about things that had happened hundreds and hundreds of years ago. But he was thanking God. For us, do you know that we can thank God for the work that Jesus did 2,000 years ago at the cross? Hallelujah. God anointed him then. He went about doing good, healing the sick. And all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. But you know, God is still doing the same thing. Jesus is still going about even today. We can thank him for the exploits of 2,000 years ago. And we can thank him for the exploits of today. Hallelujah. Because in, uh, he remembered his promise unto Abraham, his servant. Are we together, people of God? Hallelujah. And he also gave them the lands of the heathen. They inherited the labor of the people. Hallelujah. I love it. They inherited the labor of the people. You know, God does miracles that sometimes he will bless you where you did not even sweat for. Please, I'm not saying don't work. Work. Hallelujah. Work, sweat. Let leave everything to God. Hallelujah. But here, he gave them cities that they did not build. You can find that in Deuteronomy chapter 6. Praise God. He gave them goodly cities which they did not build. Hallelujah. Gave them houses full of good things which they did not build, which they did not fill. And he gave them wells that they did not dig. Hallelujah. Again, this is just the faithfulness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Because that's what he says in verse 44. He gave them the lands of the hidden and they inherited the labor of the people. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And finally, in verse 45, he says, that they might observe his statutes and keep his laws. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. God did all these things for a purpose so that he they may observe his statutes. God blesses us so that we may remember him, so that we may observe his statutes, so that we may celebrate at his word, so that we may enjoy his word, so that we may be transformed and become the people that he wants us to become. This multi-ethnic family, the family of God, the family of Abraham, where God is making a model are we together, people of God? Because we are the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Remember that God blesses us. Remember that God does all these things so that you may observe his statutes. There are so many things that are spoken in the word of God. There are many things that he tells us to do. There are many things that we mustn't do. There are things he tells us like to love one another, to work together, to flow together in, in oneness and in unity. Let us observe these things. Hallelujah. When you see what God has done, remember he has got a purpose. Are we together? Thank you, Jesus. Let us just stand up on our feet this afternoon. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
Did you learn something from Psalm 105? Hallelujah. I tried to compress it all together because there are so many things to say. And I've said briefly in outline, but you can go back, study, read. There are many other Psalms that can encourage you to give thanks to the Lord. Hallelujah. But this afternoon, before I sit down, I want you just to give thanks to the Lord. Hallelujah. You have got a reason to give thanks to the Lord. I want you yourself with your own mouth to just remember some things that God has done in your life. And I want you to say, Lord, thank you. I want you to remember and say thank you for the salvation. Remember, you did not deserve it. You did not earn it. Just tell him, Lord, thank you. Thank you for healing. You've been healed in the past. Even this afternoon, as you th give thanks to the Lord, the Lord will be healing your body. Hallelujah. Let us just raise our hands. Everybody, let us just thank God. Father, we want to thank you this afternoon. We want to thank you for the good things that you have done. We want to thank you for the works, your wonders, your wisdom, Lord. We want to thank you in the name of Jesus because you are awesome. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We want to thank you for finding us, Lord. We want to thank you because we did not deserve. Yes, we thank you because this salvation came for free in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for all the things that you have done in the past. Your wonders, your exploits that you have done in the past. How you have delivered us. How you have delivered me from death. How you have delivered me from the hand of the enemy. Lord, I give you thanks. I thank you, my heavenly Father. Thank you for this house. This place where I find brethren to worship God together with my Father. Thank you for these are your people. You are changing them, Lord. Thank you for teaching me through them, Lord. Father, I thank you because you are doing great things. We give you glory. We give you honor in the name of Jesus. We praise your holy name in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let us give another good clip of unto the Lord. Hallelujah.